In this module, I'm going to talk about the different uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo diagnostic methods, you know, to know about the convergence, to know about the minimum sample required, the minimum burn-in requirement, and different, you know, diagnostic procedures that exist uh, in MCMC literature. So uh, I, I'll, I'll also show you uh, different graphical methods, you know, to assess whether uh, the samples are coming independently, the, the, the chain is reached to the stationary distribution or not, you know, like, you know, the uh, autocorrelation plot, the time series plot, uh, these this few plots that I will show you, you know, how those plots can be used to interpret the, uh, interpret about the convergence of the MCMC chain, you know, then, you know, show you some, you know, Gelman uh, test and then uh, say, you know, uh, some some test that might help you to cal uh, calculate the, I mean, or assess the minimum sample size that is required to generate before you reach the convergence, uh, reach the stationary uh, distribution of the Markov chain. In this module, we are going to see the different uh, metropolis testings or other MCMC diagnostic uh, procedures that are there and especially you know uh, focus on the convergence of the uh, metropolis testing sampling. So let's define a function uh, that does the random walk metropolis testing sampling when supplied with the required arguments such as target density, starting point of random walk, the variance covariance matrix for the multivariate normal that is used as the uh, proposal distribution for random walk metropolis testings and burn in length for the chain. So these are the uh, few arguments that will pass through a function and then the function uh, will generate a, I mean, a multivariate random walk uh, proposal. So here, you know, I'm, I'm just defining this through the my uh, wr metro uh, function is a target n, then comma x, then uh, variance covariance matrix, then burn in, and by default, I'm setting as zero burn in. And the required package is mass, then my samples equals to x, then I'm using a for loop. And then here, you know, I'm, I'm just putting the burn in uh, arguments you know, is that the 2, it will start from 2 to burn in plus n. So if you put the burn in, then, you know, it will take, uh, if, if 1000 is required and burn in is 500, the total sample will be generated around, you know, 1500. The one less 1500 as per the uh, for loop. So that then the proposal L is actually uh, here for the random walk, I'm uh, assuming the multivariate normal. Uh, for n equals to 1 and uh, the x is the uh, the x and um, variance covariance matrix is v of that has been uh, already uh, is, is another argument and now here is the metropolis algorithm that I am putting if the random I mean r even if 1 is less than minimum of 1 and uh, the ratio of target uh, uh, l by you know target x and x is the prop L, otherwise it is the, you know, initial value itself. So it is a previous state. And my sample should be stored in, uh, the sample should be stored in my samples, that is R by in my samples, comma x. And my sample is actually, now here I am just excluding the first uh, burn in number of uh, samples as you know burn in plus 1 to n plus burn in. So it will discard the initial few, uh, initial, uh, few samples uh, as per your uh, requirement. If you say 500 then it will uh, exclude 500, first 500 samples from the uh, return value. Then we'll define an arbitrary bivariate function. Uh, so I define a multivariate uh, metropolis, random walk metropolis uh, sampler. And now I'm using one function, it's arbitrary function, say, you know, f x y equals to phi to the power minus 5 x square y square minus 1, just for demonstration. Uh, this uh, looks like a ring radius of 1, uh, radius 1 and uh, x y, uh, from the x y plane and centered at the origin. So first we'll, we'll draw a you know plot that uh, the actual uh, curve of that particular function. 
so let's define a function uh, that card 3 3d that i'm defining where function would be passed through then form to x i mean from uh, from uh, to and from y and from x to x from y to y and n equals to how much say 101 is the default value and this is the function just uh, go through this function then it will you know tell you, you know how i develop a curve 3d function uh, that uh, will help you to draw the 3d uh, curve in the next slide I will show you and the function is say uh, this if x y function is defined as g equals to function uh, x e to the power uh, x into absolute value x square you know x2 square and x is actually uh, the x1 and x2 that is x and y is combined into x and y and the arg single arguments I am uh, keeping but the single arguments will have two components x1 and x2 that is x and y as per the function and if you just draw it from minus 1.5 to 1.5 minus 1.5 to 1.5 and n equals to say 100 that will give you this 3d plot uh, so this is the uh, two uh, the bivariate function uh, of the arbitrary equation that I assume and now let's apply the metropolis Hastings the random of metropolis Hastings algorithm to generate the sample from this density I mean this function here is the example say variance covariance matrix is I mean uh, of 2d is 0 0.1 in diagonal of 2 and then R sample equals to my uh, RW metro and then the function G is the uh, target function then 5000 uh, for 50000 sample initial values are 0 and 0 initial uh, and then variance covariance matrix is the v cob 2d and that will uh, give you the sample and if you plot simple if you just plot it through plot function you will see it is quite similar like the previous plot that we have seen Now let's focus on the MCMC convergence. Just for demonstrating this convergence uh, methods, I developed that uh, random multivariate random walk sampler and use one example to demonstrate it. Now, from the theory of Markov chain, we expect the chains to eventually converge to a stationary distribution, which is also our target distribution. However, there is no guarantee that our chain has converged after AM draws. The question is then, how do we know whether the chain has actually converged? We can never be sure, but there are several tests we can do, both visual and statistical, to see if the chain appears to be converged. For all convergence diagnostics, we are uh, going to use here from a CODA function, a CODA package in R. Before we use the diagnostics, we should uh, turn our chain into a MCMC objects. We can the uh, we can tell the MCMC function to burn in and mm, drop draws with the start and end arguments. So MCMC also has a thin arguments which only tells uh, it the thinning interval that was used. So here the R sample that I have generated uh, the random uh, multivariate random walk metropolis. Uh, that should be passed through MCMC then it will convert into a MCMC object so now say image dot draw equals to MCMC R sample so now um, our sample uh, become the MCMC object by image dot uh, draws variable now we can see the summary of uh, image draws just write summary and pass the image dot draws object it will give you the summary of the sample that you have the mean of two variables that you generated the standard deviation the name estimate the standard error, uh, time switch standard error, etc the results gives the means standard deviations quantiles each components of random variate the name standard error is the standard error of mean which captured the simulation error of the mean rather than uncertainty the time series standard error adjusts the NAV standard error for autocorrelation. 
visual inspection one way to see if our chain has converged is to see how well our chain is mixing or you know moving around the parameter space if our chain is talking a long time to move around the parameter space then it will take longer to converge we can see how well our chain is mixing through visual inspection we need to do the inspection for every parameter it Trace plot is a plot of iteration number against the value of the draw of the parameter at each iteration. We can see whether our chain gets stuck in certain areas of the parameter space which indicates bad mixing. So here is a uh, plot if you just plot M MH draws then you will see the this uh, plots it's you know looks like it's smooth you know suppose in this area it seems little bit it's stuck that means this is uh, some indication little indications that you know the chain is uh, getting stuck here you know this is called bad mixing when it's coming random ups and downs then it is a good mixing so this card will tell you, you know whether any bad mixing is there you know suppose if this flat position is uh, very long then definitely it got stuck here Similarly, you know, you can see the autocorrelation plot of image and uh, these things that also will tell you whether uh, the sa independent samples are coming or not, you know, that, you know, and whether uh, how, how fast the autocorrelation dying down uh, from this but, uh, autocorrelation plot. The rejection rate of MH algorithm, we can also get a rejection rate for Metropolis Hastings algorithm using rejection rate function. To get the acceptance rate, we just want uh, 1 minus rejection rate. That's quite simple. Uh, say rejection rate function, so remember R is the uppercase. So rejection R rate, then image dot draws if you give, then variable 1 and variable 2. So rejection rate is 29% and uh, almost 30%, 30%. So acceptance rate is almost 70%. So, Now we will see the uh, gelman rubin multiple sequence diagnostics. So gelman rubin uh, diagnostics, say I am just uh, stating the different steps for this diagnostic process. For run, m greater than 2 chains of length to 2 n from over dispersed starting values. Discard the first n draws in each chain. Calculate the within chain and between chain variance. Calculate the estimated variance of the parameter as a weighted sum of within chain and between chain variance. Calculate the potential scale reduction factor. The interpretation is if we have more than one parameter, then we need to calculate the potential scale reduction factor for each parameter. And we should run our chain out long enough to show that all potential scale reduction factors are small enough. You know, perhaps less than 1.1 or 1.2. We can then combine the m into n total draws from our chains to produce one chain from the stationary distribution. See the first we run m chains at uh, different starting values say m equals to 5 here and convert them to a mc mc objects and we then put m chains together into a mc mc list uh, and then run the diagnostics with gelman dot die uh, function say first i'm uh, drawing five different chains say mh draws one is uh, the same function that I the um, uh, bivariate random work uh, sampler uh, metropolis sampler that I developed and uh, the 5000 uh, 5 5000 size uh, samples that I drawn here you know image draws so 1 2 3 4 and 5 and then put all into a mc list mc dot list then list of image dot uh, draws 1 2 3 4 5 and then that list has to be passed through a gelman dot uh, diag function. 
say gelman dot drag then image dot list then you will see the potential scale reduction factor the point estimate is 1.01 1.24 the upper confidence limit is 1.02 to 1.64 so 1.01 quite fair the multivariate ps uh, rf is 1. Point, uh, scale reduction factor uh, is 1.28 and somehow it's still acceptable we can see how the potential scale reduction factor changes through iteration using a Gelman plot. So we can change the scale reduction factor uh, and the uh, uh, sorry we, we can uh, change the number of iterations and see how it is uh, reducing or how it is functioning. Uh, the potential scale reduction function for that you can use gelman dot plot and that image list object has to be passed through gelman dot plot if you pass through gelman dot plot you will get uh, two plots for because you have a two variable by variable function that we have generated so it will it will give you two variable one is the median and another is the 97.5 percent i mean that is one is the average one another is the 97 point uh, that is the upper confidence limit so it is the upper confidence limit so the dotted lines actually the upper confidence and uh, the dark color line is actually the median and in the x-axis is the last iteration in change so iteration number increasing and we, have, we can see that the uh, shrinking factor is gradually decreasing the scale scale reduction factor gradually decreasing so we can uh, actually identify where you know seeing this plot we can easily identify where wherever you can see that the scale reduction factor is going down to 1.2 or 1.1 uh, so you can set your sample size there so that would be your uh, chain size the, uh, that you need to generate. Another diagnostic methods then we will see is the uh, JOX diagnostics uh, methods. So the, the can we treat say the first 10,000 iteration as burning? So how do you get this answer? You know how much we need to burn? You know this uh, GOX diagnostic uh, method might give you some idea about how much uh, burn in required. In a long enough chain whose stress plot suggests the convergence to the target distribution, we assume that the second half of the chain has converged uh, to the target distribution and we test if the first 10% can be treated as burn in. The uh, idea is the mimic the sample two, uh, I mean, a simple two sample test of means. If the mean of the first 10% is not significantly different from last 50%, then we conclude the target distribution converts somewhere in the first 10% of the chain. Then, GUX diagnostics use a spectral density to estimate the sample variance. Originally, I mean, uh, the bivariate uh, GUX diagnostics, originally GUX diagnostics was only designed for univariate scenario. One way to expand it to a bivariate scenario is to, is, uh, to also consider the sample covariance between the two variables X and Y. Suppose a bivariate chain X and Y is considered. After performing GUX uh, diagnostics for each chain, Calculate this expression gamma i equals to x i minus x bar into y i minus y bar for each draws of x and y. Then perform the uh, GX, uh, GX uh, diagnostic for the sample of uh, the barn in uh, of the uh, of for the sample and barn in is chosen as the early proportion that passes all the three diagnostics. So here is uh, one example of a, say image from uh, gamma distribution. So th this function is uh, is developed just for drawing uh, gamma variate for by image metabolic Hastings you know random walk sampler. So this is a random uh, metabolic Hastings random walk you know, gamma sampler that have been defined here. Now I'm using a library coda then set seed is you know 100 then sub object equals to image dot gamma then it will give you the uh, uh, gamma 
samples and then uh, this object is actually the gamma sample where I, I specified it is 10,000 and now what uh, I'll do you know that the jux dot drive uh, diag diagnostic uh, is a function that we can use from code package and then of course that object that the sample that we have generated has to be converted into mcmc object so we'll pass to mcmc object uh, that sampler and that sample to get the mcmc object uh, in uh, that mcmc object would be passed within the jwec uh, diagon uh, diagnostic function and then uh, type gd the GD will give you the details about this. So it is variable 0 0.57 and the, uh, the test, uh, the P value is uh, telling is 0 0.56 two sided variable one. And then uh, we also can do a, you know, bivariate normal give sampler. Uh, this, uh, you can fun uh, define this function bivariate normal give sampler is uh, this. And then uh, set seed equals to 100, object equals to gives dot binorm. Uh, bi just look look into the functions, how it is defined. I think hopefully it would be easy for you to understand how the by by variate uh, normal give sampler has been defined. And then uh, object is the gives dot burn and that convert that object into MCMC object and pass through the uh, UAC uh, diagnostics and that will give you the p value uh, this p value for y is actually this then p value for the uh, for sample covariance you can calculate by gamma uh, by this formula and then you will get the um, uh, for the bivariate one for the third component that we had you know gamma i that we defined earlier for that p value is 0 0.19 Suppose uh, the other one, uh, another diagnostic uh, problem methods is the, you know, Raptree and Lewis diagnostic. So the the suppose we want to measure some procedure quantity of interest Q. If we define some acceptable tolerance uh, R or for Q and the probability is of the uh, of uh, being within that tolerance, the Raptree and Lewis uh, diagnostics will calculate number of iteration in and the number of burn in M necessary to satisfy uh, the specified condition. The diagnostics was designed to test the number of iterations and the burn in needed by fast running the test uh, running and testing shorter pilot chain. In practice, we can also just test our normal chain to see if it satisfies the results that the diagnostic suggests, uh, suggests. The input are select a posterior quantile of interest say Q, you know for example say 0 0.025 quantile, select an acceptable tolerance R for this quantile for example if R equals to 0 0.005 then that means we want to measure the 0.025 quantile with an accuracy of plus minus 0.005. Select a probability S which is the desired probability of being within Q plus Q minus R to Q plus R. Run a pilot sampler to generate a Markov chain of minimum length given by rounding of N mean is this expression. So this expression will give the minimum length that you need. Uh, so now where phi inverse is the inverse of the normal CDF. So that is the Raftery, you know, Lewis diagnostics, RL diagnostics. The we can again that image draws that uh, objects that in the first uh, random walk, uh, multivariate random walk sampler that I have generated. Uh, that is image draws. Uh, that MCMC object can be passed through uh, Raptor dot diagnostic function that is Raptor dot diag. Remember, these all functions are from Coda package, so you have to load the Coda package first and then specify the quantile Q equals to 0 0.25 and then R equals to 0 0.005 and S equals to 0 0.95. The quantile Q is 0 0.025, accuracy is plus minus 0 0.05. The probability equals to 0 0.95 then the here is the required in 
in required in is this in lower bound minimum is this and the dependence factor is 20.4 i and dependent these things i mean uh, the interpretations are below actually m is the number of burnings necessary n is the number of iteration necessary in the markov chain in minimum is the minimum number of iteration for the pilot sampler and i the dependence factor interpreted as the proportional increase in the number of iteration attributed to the serial dependence high dependence factor greater than 5 are you know orisham and uh, may be due to the influential starting values so high correlation between coefficients or poor mixing i mean that could be the reason for the high dependence factor but more than 5 so some notes uh, the the uh, raptree lewis or rl uh, diagnostics will differ depending on which quantile q you choose estimates tend to be you know conservative in that it will suggest more iteration than necessary so it uh, it only tests the marginal convergence on each parameter nevertheless it often works well with simple uh, simple models the last diagnostic methods that we are going to learn today is the hildesberg uh, welch diagnostics that hw diagnostics the hw diagnostics uh, calculates a test statistics uh, based on uh, Kramer von Mises test statistics to accept or reject the null hypothesis that Markov chain is from a stationary distribution. So this will test whether it is converging to a stationary distribution or not. So the diagnostic consists of two parts. The part one is generate a chain of n iteration and define an alpha level. Calculate the test statistics on whole chain accept or reject null hypothesis that the chain is from a stationary distribution. If the null hypothesis is rejected, discard the first 10% of the chain. Calculate the test statistics and accept or reject null. If null hypothesis is rejected, discard the next 10% and calculate the test statistics. Repeat until null hypothesis is accepted or 50% of the chain is discarded. If test is still rejected null hypothesis, then chain fails the test and need to be run longer. The second part of the HW diagnostics is if the chain passes the first part of the diagnostics then it takes the part of the chain not discarded from the first part to test the second part. The half width test calculates the half the width of 1 minus alpha percent credible interval around the mean. If the ratio of the half width and the mean is lower than some epsilon then the chain passes the test otherwise the chain must be run uh, run out longer so here is the hildel diag uh, this image dot draws that object you can pass through and that will give you the test uh, the p value the p value is 0 0.407 0 0.57 so uh, it is actually it's showing it is accepted and variable uh, the half mean and half weight is actually failed and failed so I mean these are the uh, few uh, uh, MCMC diagnostics should be run you know before you use the MCMC samples to check whether the it's reaches stationarity or it's converging there and it also help you to assess you know how much sample size is required how much burning is required to uh, get the independent sample or you know the sample from a stationary distribution. In this module we have learned the different diagnostic methods for MCMC uh, convergence. So we saw how to uh, assess the convergence uh, through graphically. We saw how to do some statistical tests to assess whether convergence reach or not that is the, uh, the distribution of the chain reach to the stationary distribution or not and how to get an idea about the minimum uh, sample size required before the chain reach to the stationarity, how much burning required uh, before uh, reach to the stationary distributions or before the uh, Markov chain converge.